No Christian Wilkins for the Dolphins, no problem. I'm going Byron Murphy. I usually get him off earlier. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, pause, hold on. I usually, I usually, I usually oh, wow. draft him to a team earlier. His Gen Z kids, Trev. It took Connor like six seconds and he just goes, Oh, wow. Yeah, the phrasing there was difficult. You don't get to 500,000 subscribers without that kind of talent. the opening bell of the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. I'm Trevor Sikkim, but that is Connor Rogers. We'll get to our guests in a second, because this is the Collab Mock Draft Series. It's a Mock Draft Monday. We're doing a brand new Mock Draft here on the show, but instead of the regular two versus two format, because it's three people this time, we're putting this Mock Draft in a steel cage, baby. We're going triple threat. It's 1v1v1 for the Mock Draft World Championship of the world here on this show. Okay, maybe not that serious, but we are going to have a lot of fun on this show. Connor's obviously right next to me, and our esteemed guest is the YouTube superstar himself. It is Bengal. Bengal, thank you for joining us, my friend. How you doing? Yeah, happy Groundhog Day. It's good to be here. Uh, we're having a fun time, and I'm ready to go. This is because uh, we are all about transparency on this podcast. This is take three of yeah. seeing whether or not Connor's computer will hate the streaming service. And it's not Mock Draft not. Simulator fault. For once. <laughs> Usually it's the simulator's fault. We're battling yep. that. This is Let, strictly just a recording issue. Let's be real. It's not the it's not the PFF mock draft simulator's fault. It's a user error. It's me picking the wrong player when we're talking about a different That's right. guy. So That's a good point. Bengal, hopefully that you don't get that. But if you do, hey, you get to see how the sausage is made. Dude, you are you are killing it on YouTube. You always have been. You have been for a really long time. You do a lot of Madden stuff. You do a lot of NFL stuff. But you also do a ton of draft stuff as well. So we're super excited to have you here on the channel we had the pleasure of being on your channel a couple of years ago now it's the uh it's the home and home right we had an agreement we had a series this is this is part two of the series here so man we are super excited to have you it, 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 on for this episode how deep are you into this class here we're only doing a first round mock but what do you think so far overall of this 2024 class just to kind of kick it off here yeah we talked about this earlier i like to get to usually about 150 players it's kind of like my my baseline, yeah. but a little bit behind this year. Lots going on, and uh, I, I need to catch up and don't really have a ton of time to do it. But it, it, we all know this is the most exciting time of the year, at least you know Connor and I being Giants and Jets fans. Mm. Uh, we That's what we live just, for. Yeah. What, what else is there other than looking forward to the NFL draft? It's the real season. Uh, I mean, See, you know what, Trevor, you were there for a little while, but you got a Super Bowl recently, so... Yeah, Tom Brady know, shows up better. and changes this is, things. I, look, I told people all the time, like, they're like, oh, when'd you get into the NFL draft? I was like, uh, the second I was born south of Tampa. <laughs> like, that's just like, that's that's when I became invested in the NFL draft because, yeah, like y'all said, there have been blips of success, but most of the other time it's like, yeah, but could draft this guy. You know, maybe he'll save the franchise. No. The only maybe thing is Josh that, Freeman's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Mike Lennon's the guy. Oh, maybe man. Josh Legend. McCown's the guy. Second round pick Kyle Trask. Don't you hey, it. you know, that one could be real. Go get it. No, look, <laughs> it could look, be. I, look, I tell people all the time, building a franchise is very easy, okay? Just go sign Tom Brady. That's it. That's what the Bucks did. I mean, why can't y'all out there go do that? That's, what, that, that, that's how it's done. That's the advice that I always give everybody. Blueprint's out there. <laughs> the, the blueprint is, in fact, out there. Uh, all right, so let's get, get, let's get this one kicked off. I strategically set the order. So the Bengal, you're picking for the Giants at number six. I don't know if you caught that, but, you know. Just, I, I may have. Right. So, um, Connor, I can't remember. Did I? I think I start. No, no, no. You start. <laughs> Wait a second. It's got to be your bull. Things are going no. well. Right. <laughs> so you will start the mock draft off. I will go okay. second. And then Bengal will go third. And we will just go in um, standard variation after that. Just one, two, three, four of the order. Does that sound good? Sound good to everybody? By the way, yeah. for everybody out there, this is a what we would do mock draft. The point of having Bengal on the show is to flex his expertise, his team building. He does such a fantastic job fixing and rebuilding franchises all the time on his YouTube channel, which you guys should go to and subscribe to if you don't already. Real simulation exercise on there. It's Look, basically one to one with the NFL. 100%. <laughs> Just go I've trade for Brian Burns. That's what yeah. I do every time. And the Giants actually did. So, Maybe yeah, I was finally watching say. you. Yeah. Oh, you know what I just realized as well? Yes. I'm going to be picking at 18 
the Bengals fans jokes will never stop. Yes. You just didn't, didn't you just do an episode like rebuilding the Bengals? Yeah. I mean, look at the comment section. There is a dumpster fire. <laughs> Unreal. I, I, it's, it's like dropping a bomb. You know, it's going to happen. But when you see the sheer carnage, I watched Oppenheimer. There, there was a lot going on. <laughs> it's one thing to see it. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. No, this is great. This is great. I'm glad that you realized that because I didn't didn't even plan that far ahead. We really do here on the show, but that's what makes it a lot of fun. Um, well, I'm going to fire up the PFF Mock Draft Simulator. Uh, I'm going to throw it on the screen. Y'all can do so at home as well. If you have a PFF subscription, you get the fully unlocked Mock Draft Simulator. It means you can go seven rounds. You can do the trades, all that good stuff. Oh, and you can get 30% off right now if you use 30MDS as the promo code. Just wanted to say that before we got started. Connor! Giants, sorry, not Giants. This comment section is really ridiculous. <laughs> For the video? <laughs> yes. Are you looking at it? Yes. Yeah, I got it. Can open. you read them? Can you I, read off? I'll a read couple? a couple, of, a couple of personal standouts. Yeah, let's get, let's get. I Glad really, to we, see... got, we got Machiavelli on top, and then we got his Punisher on the bottom, enforcing this, just making me sit through these comments. <laughs> Glad to see Bengal is humble enough to rebuild the team, the team he named the channel after so late in the game's life cycle. Uh, another one. I'm just picking these out of a hat. Bengal, sure. you look just like T. Higgins. <laughs> I've I've seen that meme. I don't get it. Like he's just comparing any white person to Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, I, I don't. I don't I'm not it. even up to speed of this. Yeah, yeah you shouldn't either. be. That's that's some deep YouTube stuff. Wait, it, it, if I if I ask how you came up with the YouTube name alias bengal is it a long story or can i can can you actually give the answer here? not really i mean uh it was before i was doing uh any type of nfl content i was like 12 years old back in you know i guess 2010 or whatever we got a, we got a prodigy over here yeah and uh yeah oh, you're mean, still a 90s kid that I surprises am. me that's yeah. good okay whatever dude finally a, finally, a, <laughs> finally a w. he said he said that's good yeah, whatever anyway rare w uh, it's just you make classic <laughs> xbox 360 make the gamer tag mm. i like tigers bengal tiger there you go wow, it's nice. it's i'm a child so and it's stuck there we go look that's sometimes sometimes that's what it's all about you got to get like an alter ego now you log on to youtube and you're look an nfl team names a franchise after you you know you started <laughs> yeah, you started early on and that's how that's how that works uh, Connor, you're up for Chicago at number one overall. What are we doing? How about those oh, Mets, man. by the way, Connor? Oh, yeah, hot start. <laughs> it's going to be a fun year. Wait, do they stink? No, oh, they're going to be dreadful. Oh, yeah. But it will be fun when they give Juan Soto $3 billion in the winter, Bengal. It will be really, really fun. $3 billion. And That's <laughs> no about, comment. what, one-eighth of Steve Cohen's net worth? He can afford it. He, he, in fact, can afford it. All right, number one, the Chicago Bears. Uh, really tough decision here. I'm going to have to make a panic pick. Caleb Williams is the selection. Justin Fields out the door. It's going to be a fun offense to watch with Caleb Williams. Keenan Allen in town, DJ Moore. They're pretty deep at running back now. The offensive line was starting to come together last year. This is all tailor-made for Caleb Williams to have a really nice rookie season, honestly. Yeah, the pick at number one, not really a surprise. It's the pick at nine that is really kind of like the mystery right. every time that we do a mock draft. Um all right, so I'm up at number two for Washington. This one's super easy for me as well. Drake May is my guy to go with here in this in this quarterback class. I know there's a lot of hype for Jaden Daniels. I know there's a lot of hype for JJ McCarthy, but um, ah, man, I I think we're nitpicking Drake May at this point. Um, Bengal, I don't know if you have any takes between like Drake May versus Jaden Daniels. I know the Giants are kind of like in this conversation to maybe get aggressive to get a quarterback. I didn't know if you had a preference for any of them not named Caleb Williams. I'm going to go Drake May here at number two for for the Washington Commanders, but was curious if you had any uh, Drake May versus Jaden Daniels takes. I actually think Drake May is a lot closer to Caleb than Jaden Daniels. That's just my preference. I, I agree. And I don't even know that Caleb Williams for me is so far and away – uh, QB one special player love Caleb Williams but I think it's kind of one a one b with May I'm a big Drake May fan uh you you know we all talk about summer scouting all the time and Drake May was somebody that even you know uh, a couple of years ago just completely stood out mm -hmm. and um he is a couple of years of being really really solid and I know last season was a little bit disappointing lose all your weapons offensive line was disastrous which is why I think he's such a great fit on the Giants it's going to be a one-to-one -one type situation he's used to it but yeah, I, I'm a huge Drake May fan. You think so? Obviously, like we're doing, we're doing trades in this mock draft. I 
can't see Washington trading off the number two. So like, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And again, in a, what we would do mock draft, I'd be taking Drake may. I wouldn't anyways, but do you think the giants are going to be super aggressive to get up to like two or three? I mean, I don't think there's any path to them to the number two pick because it's in division. You know, oh, right, you, course, you right. do see teams trade in division, but for a quarterback. Yeah, no way. No way. That wouldn't happen. That and then happen. I just can't see the Patriots passing on a quarterback and Everyone talks about, oh, well, their roster's so bad. You got to get out of this pick, get more picks or get a different player. Imagine bringing in a Marvin Harrison Jr. But it's especially in a stacked receiver class, a stacked tackle class. It's not really a stacked quarterback class. Those don't really exist. You got a couple guys at the top. I would have a really tough time passing on a QB at three. And I'd fill out the rest of the team with my other picks. I think it's so much more difficult to find a QB. And that's why I would go Jaden Daniels here at three. Okay. All right. Take the chance. All right. So yeah, th- and that's that's kind of similar conversations that we've had here on the show. Connor and I talked about this with um, Danny Kelly and Ben Solak on on last week's show when we were doing a mock draft with those guys. Connor was kind of advocating for us taking Marvin Harrison Jr. and I was the one who was like, yeah, I think I'd lean a little bit more towards kind of like what Bengal said, where it's just man, you got to take the swing, like you got to take the swing in the bat. Marvin is great, but Shoot, I mean, how often are you going to pick in the top five, top three? I, I'd, I'd be taking the swing. They as might well. next year. <laughs> well, and, and sure. they could. And if you don't take a QB, then yeah, I guess that right. could be in the cards. But it, even though, even though you could say, hey, a team is in a multi-year rebuild type of a situation, it's hard to really predict we're going to have a top three pick this year, right? Right. right. Like y- you look at the Cardinals specifically. We went into this season, and the the mock draft simulator had the Cardinals picking at number one with their own pick, and then the Texans at two. Texans obviously go on a crazy run. Now they're picking in the 20s. But even Arizona's pick, like Arizona was not a good football team this past year. They're not even picking top three. They're four. So it's just it's it's tough for me to look at a team who needs a quarterback in the top three for them to not take one, but Bengal taking Jaden Daniels here at number three, Connor, that does put you back on the board now with the Cardinals at number four. Yeah. And it makes it really easy for me. I mean, this Marvin Harrison jr. Obviously he's a great player to add to this offense that it gives you everything you want from a number one wide receiver. They're obviously rolling forward with Kyler Murray. This team has a lot of needs, but more importantly, they just need blue chip talent right now. And that's exactly what Marvin Harrison jr. Is. Yep. I agree. Uh, Bengal, any debate between Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, similar to kind of like the quarterback conversation that you were talking about with uh, with May and Caleb Williams? Yeah, I I mean, how can you not like all of them, right? I hate to give the complete what bipartisan answer or whatever. I mean, it's not wrong. Whatever the fancy word is. Uh, but they're, uh, they're all such talented players. Harrison Jr. is the guy for me, and everyone's typed him up. But the way I've kind of put it into layman's terms is when you watch him, he's the guy that just everything looks so easy. The play is that you're like, he's never going to make that. He just does easily. It, he's just so polished. But Neighbors is like this, the spark plug rocket ship. Yep. And I mean, it depends what you want in your offense. When we're making a big board, and I try to explain this in my videos as well, like, you know, it's easy to just say, oh, this guy's better than this guy, this guy's better than that guy. But if you're in an offense and you need – you know, a big time speed rack threat, you're not going to take Harrison Jr. You're going to take neighbors. Right. So is neighbors better than Harrison if you're making a big board? Uh, Really tough to say. Probably wouldn't say it. But if you are looking for an injection of electric speed and run after catch ability, it's not even close. Yeah. Look, I I think that there's a lot of good conversation that can happen when we start to get into like team specific big boards for that very reason, right? It doesn't have to be this cop out answer of like, Oh, you know, it kind of depends on the team. Like it genuinely does. That's, that's, a, that's a real answer. And I think when you get to kind of dig into, okay, well would this team rather have this player, like I look at that for the giants at six. Um, and I know we're not there in the pick yet, but Marvin Harris Jr. is off the board. A world might exist and shoot. I might set up the world here in a second where neighbors and Romo Dunze are on the board, I have neighbors ranked higher, but for the Giants specifically, if they want like a bigger bodied wide receiver, maybe they take Odunze over over Malik neighbors. So I think that those are all conversations that can be had and, and they are all true, honestly. So 
Chargers are up at five. This is me. And um, oh, wow. Would you look at that? I also control the Minnesota Vikings at number 11. Hmm. <laughs> it is funny how these things work out. I I think this makes the most sense for why for e- even though I think trading two first round picks to go up and get JJ McCarthy is a lot. So does that make sense? Cuz I don't think it does. That's the that's the part that that really is the hang up here for me. Right. I love the idea of the Chargers trading down. I continuously go back to that. Is McCarthy worth five? I don't think he is. And it's what we would do mock. So now you're hearing the internal battle in my head of what we're going to do here. I think I'm going to go offensive line. I actually think I'm going to go Joe Alt at five. Oh, for as good as Malik, but Malik Neighbors is so good. This is somehow you guys' fault. I don't know how it is, but it is. I'm going Joe Alt. Lose Connor again. Nice. I'm going Joe Alt. I'm going Joe Alt here at number five. Chargers taking Joe Alt at five. I'm doing it. I'm taking him over a receiver. They seriously need offensive tackle help. They really do. They've got Rayshon Slater, and then that's it. I understand that Rayshon plays on the left side. Joe Alt only plays on the left side as well. But I think that Joe Alt could move to the other side of the line. I really do. I I have faith in that. So here we go. Joe Alt, number five overall. Haven't seen that one in a minute. Had to bring it back, though. You win football in the trenches. Bengal, now you're up at number six for the New York Giants. How and it feeling? does it does open up the door for exactly what we talked about, which is the neighbors versus Odunze conversation yes. with the the fit into the offense. But at the same time, I almost want to backtrack slightly here and say that that might more apply down the board when you're talking about you know similar uh, talents, different you know flavors, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But at the top, you might just be trying to take the best player when they can all impact. Like I don't think there's any debate that we think. You know, Neighbors and Odunze can both be a wide receiver one in an offense. And I just happen to view Neighbors as the better overall player. I think, you know, very different shade from Harrison. I think Odunze is kind of in a similar mold to Harrison if you're going to compare those two. And I just think he's worse. And I think I think Neighbors is better. They're both, I think, great players. You're really, you know, um, right. splitting hairs here. But Neighbors, I think, just adds a different element that I'm not sure Odunze does. And not that Odunze is not great. I don't want to say he's 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 not great because he's a great player. But neighbors, I just think, has that upper echelon type impact potential because of the athletic profile. And Odunze right. is a great athlete, but neighbors just takes it to another level for me. Yeah, it's the separation skills, right? I mean, like right. I I think a lot of people try to talk about these wide receivers, and you know they they don't want to necessarily bring the other ones down. But I think you can have an honest conversation that Malik Neighbors is different because he separates better. I'm the way that this dude moves is rare. So like the, if, if that is something that you prioritize, which I think everybody should, you know, separating, getting bigger throwing windows, throwing targets, everything like that yards after the catch, he's going to be your guy. So are, are you going with neighbors then at six? I am. Yeah. And it, it kind of, not that Odunze is comparable to JSN, right? But it does remind me of last year with the Jordan Addison versus uh, JSN. And it's like, Addison separates better, can probably play on the outside more so than a JSN. I didn't really understand the debate so much. Um, but Ooh, so you, you, so you were a big Addison I guy. Did, I, I think one. I evaluate, or I, I value the separator a little okay. bit higher. And, and not that again, not that JSN is not a great player. I'm really covering my bases here, but I just think <laughs> in terms of which one's more valuable to yeah. me yeah. on a big board. It, yeah, I, I did have Addison. I was extremely worried that. Jordan Addison was just so skinny. I I think he was wide receiver four for me because I could I, obviously the tape was there, but I'm like, God, it's a big man's game. I don't know, I don't know. So I had him wide receiver four, but I mean he's been fantastic this past year. So obviously he was great, and uh, and you nailed that one, uh, Connor. You are now up with the Tennessee Titans at number seven. Right, and a little bit of a twist with this one that all went five, which could mm. very well happen honestly, in this scenario Um, with the Titans right now, I I still think 
They should be in on offensive line here. I mean, you can make an argument, hey, Roma Dunze would really help this offense, but this is a great tackle class. I still really like Olu Fashanu. Okay. I, I know the Titans with Bill Callahan there working for his de- for his son, which is kind of an interesting element. The run blocking will matter a ton to them, and it's just not Olu's strength. He got better at it, but he's not at the level of, when you look up the guys he's against, alt's gone, so that doesn't matter, but... He's not a better run blocker than Taliza Fuwanga, you know, Troy Fatanu, JC Latham. So, but I'm still going to go with Fashanu here because to me, his athleticism, his length, his ability and pass protection. Will Levis was under a lot of pressure last year. They need to keep this guy upright. They need to give him a chance back there. And I think Fashanu will continue to grow as a run blocker as well. So I know he's lost that, you know, kind of flair as a top 10 pick but I've never moved him out of my top 10 players. All right. So Olu Vashanu, it's uh, it's taboo to have Olu in the I top know. 10 these days. You know, it's very, very, uh, very, very irregular to see that nowadays. But yeah, it's, it's a hipster move. That's me. why. Yeah, that's why we do the uh, the what we would do mock drafts. Bego, do you have a uh, like an uh, shoot? Well, I was going to ask an OT2 preference like you had quarterback two or wide receiver two. Do you have an OT2 preference? But shoot, maybe this guy who I'm trying to get you to say is OT2. Maybe he's your OT1. Or do you like Joe Alt the best? Basically, I'm not sure that you'll have the opportunity to go through the offensive tackle debate. So curious what you think of the top guys. I mean, I watched Olu a lot in uh, in 2022 for Mm -hmm. preparation for the 2023 draft. And I came away thinking he was great, struggled a bit against Ohio State. Not the best run blocker, but he did get better, as Connor mentioned, in 2023. And I thought Alt was good, but is he going to become great? And then Alt was great in 2023. So I think Alt, for me, solidified himself as OT1. But Fashionu, I think, and uh, dude, I was, I, I've been calling him for Shanu the entire process, but I, I, I heard it's actually Fashionu. Oh, it's, okay. very, it's very difficult for me to say that because uh, you get so used to saying yeah. one thing. I, I need maybe more confirmation. Um, well, it's like it, it's like Talisa Fuanga's name. There's the there's the N in there. It's it's not Fuaga, which by the way, I'm covering my bases here. Oregon State's on the website. Bio yep, I says, saw that as well. Says Fuaga, and yeah. apparently when he was sitting down with the NFL Network guys, they were like, "How do you say his name?" He's like Fuanga. Like it, there's the N in there that you got to throw the N in there. So the A G in the Samoan uh, Pacific Islander languages is the ung, like we see with Tua. That right. I still get corrected. Oh, it's Tagovailoa. Can't you read? Like, <laughs> I want to. I want to. <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I love Fashion as a player. Really do. And uh, again, struggle with Ohio State a little bit. It's 2023. That kind of okay. seems to be his uh, his M O is J T Two House power. And even Jack Sawyer can be a little bit of a problem. But I, I love him. I I think he's a top 10 caliber player for sure. Okay, so we've got uh, Olu Fashionu off the board at number. But seven. potentially, but I, I've heard that I they said it at the combine. <laughs> Perhaps I, that's what I've been In saying theory. lately. Yeah, I you know I could DM him and, and just get this over with. I don't know if I get an instant response, but we could just figure it out right now. Wow, you guys follow each other. That. You got you, you guys. Both? Oh, not not to just drop that, but it. Well, I mean, you yes, kind of yes. you kind of did just drop that. What do you I, mean not to just he, drop? He didn't that. correct me when I interviewed him at the combine, and I said here with Olu Fashanu. But he could also just be a really nice person. Could that also be like the Luis Robert thing with the White Sox, where it's like his name's not Luis Robert, and even he said it in his. I hate to go back to baseball here, but he's like it's Rover. But it's like, how ridiculous do I look saying Rover? So he's just My like call me Robert, care. whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Well, uh, we'll wait to see if we get the DM confirmation. Maybe we'll we will by the end of the show. Falcons. Maybe he'll say who is this? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I love that's I love uh when like free agency period is around and like people are always just like oh like I texted with this person like I texted with this person whatever I love throwing out the tweet where it's like I texted uh I texted Bears GM Ryan Poles you know like what are you guys thinking for for interior defense did tackle and he said who is this and like just that (laughs) that is the tweet um I I always never gets old throwing that one okay so we've got the Falcons up at number eight what we would do mock draft. I might get a little crazy with this one. I don't think I'm going to go Rome, although I'm extremely tempted. Drake London, Romo Dunze, Kyle Pitts. 
They do need defense, though. I'd be comfortable taking Laatu Latu here. I really would. And he's going to end up being my edge one in this class. But I also don't hate the idea of Jerzon Newton as well. Because mm. Johnny Newton's my dude. And they've got David Onyemata, who's 31. They've got Grady Jarrett, who is 30. And that's about it on the defensive line. Now, I'm not saying that those guys are terrible, but Newton can be a game wrecker for them. And then, of course, Cooper DeGene, who I also love. I think I'm going to go Johnny Newton. I think I'm going to switch it up. I, I don't think I, it's crazy at all. I think he's... I've got him, I've got him ranked above Laatu Latu. And so to stay true to my heart and my rankings, what the draft is all about, getting good football players, I'm going to take Johnny Newton. And Falcon fans, if you guys want to fight me in the comments, let's do it. We're already in the steel cage. Bring your weapon of choice, all right? You no, know, it's a no holds barred. It's a backyard match, I guess. You do whatever you want, but I'm going Johnny Newton here at number eight because I think he's worth it. Connor, thoughts? He's my highest ranked defensive player in the draft. I have him 13th overall, uh, right ahead of... Let me make sure that I didn't miss. Oh, so, so Ver, I do have Verse slightly ahead of him, but okay. I mean, obviously, they don't they don't play the same position, so that kind of loses its point there. Sure. New, the point is, Newton players. qualifies as the first defense, like a guy that should be considered to be the first defender taken. And if he wasn't hurt during the process, I think confidently he would have been. I'm with you, Bengal. You're up at number nine with the Bears. Layup, Roma Dunze. Mm. Extreme the layup, the yep. most wide open layup. Who better to learn from than Keenan Allen for a year That's as he a, develops? Perfect. 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 It's beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah, a beautiful they, way to go. Very similar play styles. Connor, now you're up with the Jets at 10. Right. So the way this one fell, Brock Bowers has been a very uh, chalk pick for the Jets. Mm-hmm. I would say I don't have a problem with it. I do worry about the depth of an offensive line that is relying on two 33-year-old tackles that I like a lot, but Tyron Smith, He's just he's not going to play the full season, right? It's there's no guarantees that uh, Morgan Moses will play the full season as well. So for me, this one would come down to Troy Fatanu versus Taliza Fuanga. And I think that Fatanu gets the slight nod here from me because he can come in and compete to be the left guard against John Simpson right away. And I think his he's played left tackle, right? Fuanga's played right tackle. I don't know if you're just throwing Fuanga over on the left side as soon as Tyron Smith gets hurt. So I would take Troy Fatanu here at number 10 overall, and I, I will in this mock draft. All right. I love it. I, you know you know that's my favorite pick for the Jets at number 10 as well. Oh, I think for the reason that you laid out, it just it makes so much sense. Yeah, it's a good-looking five. Tyron Smith, Fatanu, Joe Tittman, I mean, good, good Elijah six. Tucker, Morgan Moses, and then John Simpson, your sixth, is good living. Right, right. I think that you're in a good situation at that point. Vikings are up at number 11. I'm picking for the Minnesota Vikings. I'm I'm not going to let J.J. McCarthy slide any further. Right. This, this to me, like, I, I, I would genuinely love this scenario for the Vikings if they didn't have to trade back and they were able to get J.J. McCarthy around this range. We know that the NFL does not exist like that, but it's what we would do mock draft. And we're trying to see, like, hey, you've done we've done a lot of like predictive simulations what we think is going to happen we've done countless mock drafts where we have the vikings trading up last week we kind of didn't really know what to do with jj mccarthy at the time with them trading up but i I didn't feel great about them trading up at this point in time either so here we have them staying number 11 overall mccarthy's coming off the board at this point so we do still get four quarterbacks in the top 12 but a little different than what we thought was going to be the case so um mccarthy at 11 to the vikings Bengal, have you watched, before we get to your pick with the Broncos, because I guess it's a little bit of a segue because the Broncos love him as well. Have you been able to watch, like, McCarthy? And, like, do you think that – there are some people out there who just don't even think he's a first-round pick. I don't know. Are you at that point? Is this something that you're comfortable with? Like, what do you think about McCarthy? I think if, if you're going based on upside, I feel like people are kind of downplaying his upside. If you watch him, doesn't get too many opportunities because they run the ball every play, right? But – he makes a couple splash plays a game, big third downs. I mean, he's he's made some of the best throws of anyone in this class. You're talking about threading the needle. He does it at the top level, or, or has at least. It's about you know finding that consistency. But I think you could argue that that will come with more reps. And a situation like Minnesota feels like the perfect place for him to go. Yep. You already have, let's just say, the best receiver in football. 
Addison's a nice number two. TJ Hawkinson in the mix. Uh, pretty good offensive line, especially with the tackles. And then, I mean, Kevin O'Connell made Josh Dobbs into the pastronaut. I feel like with J.J. <laughs> McCarthy, feel pretty good about it. What an elite nickname, dude. Oh, yeah. Such a good nickname. The pastronaut. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Well, we look, Bengal, we gave you a layup at nine. That pick took you all of two seconds to make. This one's a little bit more difficult. Broncos would absolutely love to take a quarterback, and maybe you will. I'm going to take that off the board. But I will not. walk us through what you'd have the uh, Broncos be doing at this point. I think you're in a unique situation here where you've got big needs on the defensive side of the ball. You did trade Jerry Judy, and that maybe opens up the door for Brian Thomas Jr., which is intriguing to me. Mm-hmm. But uh, you have the top corners on the board. You have Dallas Turner. You have Leatu Latu still. You have Byron Murphy still. Hook him, of course. course. Um, You really, I I feel like, could do anything here. I don't think you need to be locked into a quarterback. The thing that gets a little bit tricky, right, is they don't have a second-round pick. So Mm -hmm. where are you going to pick up a QB if you're uh, planning on drafting one? Is it Michael Pratt? I'm a Michael Pratt guy. I don't know how you guys feel about him. I like Michael Pratt. I, I like, like Pratt. I, Rattler could be interesting. I loved Pratt's 2022 film. And then that first game of the year before he hurt his knee, I mean, he looked like he couldn't miss. Like he, he, he looked like a perfect quarterback in that one game. And then he hurt his knee and he just, he did not come back the same. And I don't, right. I don't really know what to believe. Um, Cause you just have two very different seasons from Michael Pratt. But I said this on a scouting report, man. I mean, I think he probably throws with touch about as well as any quarterback in this class, which is um, when we talk about traits, sure, arm talent, velocity, rushing ability, like those things are physical gifts and traits, but I I don't think touch gets talked about enough as like a legit difference-making NFL trait because you can work on rhythm and timing and accuracy the more times you run a route with a wide receiver, but touch is almost something that you can't teach. Like you just got to have it, and I feel like Michael Pratt does, so I do like him. Yeah, I'm a, I really like him too. I think that all that starting experience across four years, you see the timing, the rhythm, uh, the ability to roll out and throw accurately. And I, I'm, you know, I'm with you, Trev. I think he clearly was not right when he came back, and it, mm. it, it just looked like a different player on film than we were accustomed to seeing. Yep. So Michael Pratt at twelve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> That's I, great. It, there, there's so many like different intriguing options. I feel like even if the Broncos are not able to get a quarterback here, they should be pretty happy with how uh, the board has fallen for them. I think I'm going to go Dallas Turner on the basis of beefing up the trenches, so to speak. I know he's a three, four outside linebacker, but I, I'm also a big Baron Browning guy. And I feel like that guy's waiting to be unlocked mm-hmm. and his transition to the edge. He showed flashes and, Dallas Turner is someone who is you're not really going to find a better athlete than him. Of course, you can talk about Chop Robinson, but you know Turner is a more complete player right now. He, he's good against the run as well, which typically we, we wouldn't say of of a you know these super freak athletes at the top um, on the defensive line. But I, I like his potential, and I, I think he's got a fairly safe uh, floor as well. I don't know if he's ever going to be a top pass rusher in the league, but I think he'll be an impactful player. And I think you can, you know, wrap your head around that at number 12 and, uh, and feel good about it. All right. Dallas Turner, 12 overall to the Denver Broncos. Connor, you're up with the Raiders. I feel like you're up with the Raiders a lot. I, I does feel that way. Uh, and I, this pick is not very hard for me, honestly, in this spot. I mean, I guess there's an argument that Quin- Quinion Mitchell would be a really fun pick here. It he would be a fun pick. His DNA and play style just fits where this franchise is going. He'd fit in with this hard-nosed defense under Crosby. They had Wilkins in the offseason. So Mitchell would be a really fun route to go, but it's hard to get really excited about this team until they have another guy waiting in the wings at quarterback. As much as they sign Gardner Minshew, they have Aiden O'Connell there. Aiden O'Connell slander. (laughs) <laughs> Aiden O'Connell it. slander, I guess. Stand it. I guess it's mustache slander, which I, I do have a problem with. So I, I just mm. I feel kind of bad about that. Uh, mm. Michael Penix Jr. is the pick here for me. Mm. I, I just you know how much I love this guy. He's QB three in this class for me. And he ends up being what the fifth quarterback taken here. Fifth quarterback and, taken. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think Penix is a guy that, you know, he goes into this situation. He technically doesn't have to play right away because they have Gardner, who I think will ultimately start. But 
I think this is a nice landing spot for Penix. And, and I think that the Raiders get to sit tight, not give up any capital and get their franchise quarterback of the future. Yeah, I think they're going to be aggressive, but if they're sitting here at number 13 and they love Michael Penix and they want to take him in the first round and they don't have to trade up to do so, obviously that's a good situation for them. Um, New Orleans up at number 14. To me, this is offensive tackle. I, I think it has There's to be. been on the line right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ryan Ramchek, I mean, we don't know how much longer he's going to play football with his knee. Um, Trevor Penning was not reliable, has not been reliable consistently throughout his NFL career at this point. I mean, you got nobody. You've got you've got potential issues at, uh, at offensive tackle on both sides. I mean, you can simulate a year from now when both these dudes might not even be on the team, might not be projected starters for them. So I love Talise Fuanga. Um, Connor, you know, I've, I've been a big fan of his since – October, November, when I when I first started watching his film, I, I think that he's a fantastic right tackle. Um, I don't think he only has to play right tackle, though. I think that there's a world where you could push him inside. He could even play on the interior for you while you wait to see uh, what's gonna what's gonna happen and what's gonna manifest with the left tackle and the right tackle spots. And I think he's got the ability to play either. So um, Fuang is one of my favorites in this class. I think New Orleans would love to get him here at 14 if he ends up falling this far. Bengal, you're up at 15. Yeah, this one. I think is fairly straightforward for me. I thought about Brian Thomas Jr. If he got to here, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm thinking about taking one of the top corners off the board, but I just think Brock Bauer is one of the best players in the draft. And I want to build around Anthony Richardson. I think with, even though you have needs on defense, especially in the secondary, I just feel like we can afford as the Colts in this scenario, we can afford to be a little bit worse on defense, to be a little bit better on offense and develop our young quarterback. So I want to get Anthony Richardson, Brock Bowers, and you know, I think it, you know they can creatively use him. You know, compete with Josh Downs for slot snaps. Well, that sounds fun. But uh, <laughs> hey, I like yeah. Josh Downs. I, I like Josh Downs Great a lot too. Here. Okay, all right. Okay. But uh, I, I just think it's funny comparing them because those are two guys that could play in the slot, and they have very different builds. Right. So but I think that it sets up. I think we. I can't remember when we talked about this, Connor, but like it's it it sets you up in an interesting scenario where. You know, if you're Shane Steichen, you have the ability to kind of manipulate that slot spot for you, right? I mean, like if the if the yeah. team you're going up against that week has a five foot ten, 185 pound slot corner that they normally play as their nickel defender, well, then just stick Brock Bowers out there and he's the mismatch. If if they like to rotate their safeties down and they have more of a safety or a box player who likes to play over the slot in, in, in like an overhang situation. Throw Josh Downs in there. Have him win quick against those more powerful players. So um, I, I don't hate that at all. I don't think that it's one necessarily has to take away from the other. I think that they could be pretty good compliments. And this is a very common mock draft landing spot for Brock Bowers. But to me, it, it makes a ton of sense. And so I'm, I'm right there with you. Connor, you're up at 16. So the, the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are interesting because the value on this board right now, to me, is the edge group with both Latu and Verse sitting there. It and is I, what you would I, do. I think. Things that point in the right direction for Seattle's edge defenders. You know, they have uh, Boye Mafe there, Uchenna and Wosu. It doesn't feel like a desperate situation where I look at the offensive line and go, man, it feels like they need another guy on that offensive line. Now, how you play them becomes a little convoluted because I think the guy that I would consider taking here would maybe be JC Latham because I think you could play him inside and if it didn't work out with abraham lucas at right tackle he just put latham at his natural position of right tackle mm-hmm. it's just the you have to be confident as a team that you can ask guys to move around out of position and that's always a little bit dangerous so uh for me with the with the seahawks and i i like graham barton a lot i didn't want to take graham barton at 16 even though i think he could play any position on this offensive line he was mm-hmm. definitely a consideration for me same with jpj which is a pick we've done um, but I like the tackle versatility of Latham. So I'm going to go with him here. But I would be fascinated to see how they handle this situation if Verse and Latu were on the board where, hey, we're not bad at edge, but man, we could be a lot better with one of these guys. Yeah, I, I wonder if Latu uh, is enough to lure them away from an offensive tackle pick with him being on the board. But And they um, go that route later, maybe, with the depth of this line class. It'd be interesting. Right. But yeah, right, I ultimately right. will take Latham just because it's a different route we haven't done. And 
I mean, that team will be able to run the football. Him, if him and Anthony Bradford got the chance to play next to each other, that's two of the most powerful downhill folks. duos yeah. I have seen. Yeah, yeah, they're moving, folks. All right, so JC laid them off the board at 16. Jags on the board at 17. This is a what I would do situation. Um, I feel like if if this is the way things fell for Jacksonville and it was a predictive mock, I think that it's either Quinion Mitchell or it's um, AD Mitchell. Honestly, it's 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 one of the Mitchells here. I, I think that they're going to absolutely love both of those players. You put Brian Thomas Jr. on the board there as well. I'm going corner. But I'm not going to go Mitchell. I'm going to go with the corner that I have ranked higher than him. I'm going to go to Cooper DeGene. I've got to stay true to my board here. And if cornerback is the need opposite Tyson Campbell, I think that that's what they got to hit here. I'm going to go with the player that I think has a ton of versatility, a lot of overall athleticism, ball skills for days. I just think he's a really damn good football player. One of the best tackling defensive backs that we have in the class, not even just for the cornerback position. So don't know how much the Jags essentially would be interested, but in a what we would do scenario, if I'm Jacksonville and he's on the board of 17, I'm taking Cooper DeGean. So, Bengal, now you are up with the Bengals. There Funny it is. That, Funny how that works. Funny how that works. I'm between two players here. It's Byron Murphy from Texas, which my heart wants me to take, and okay. Marius Mims of Georgia. Mm. You know, we, we talk about you know, lay out to lot to and, and even panics with the injury stuff. But Mims really worry about him. I've seen only a few games. He's only played like what, eight, eight starts in his career, something yeah. incredibly small and got hurt in Indianapolis too. Not great, but I think the tape's phenomenal. I typically have not seen a guy that size move like that. And it, I mean, he stands out. I think he's it just in a small sample size, as much of a novice as I am with offensive line film, I think he's about the best tackle in this class for a stretch of games, however small. I'm a big Amarius Mims guy. And even with bringing in Trent Brown for a year, you have Orlando Brown Jr. Um, I would still like to get another tackle in the mix, similar to what Connor did at 10 with the Jets. And I'm going to go Mims here at 18. Wow. That is, this is a Monstars offensive tackle group. Now with Orlando Brown Jr., Marius Mims <laughs> and Trent Brown. These are just, I mean, you're walking to practice and these are just absolute giants who are walking onto the field. First so off the bus, guys. 100%. Uh, to, first three off the bus. 1,000%. This, this, is how you, this is how you win the intimidation battle within is you put these three guys as the first ones walking off the plane, walking off the bus, walking into the stadium, whatever it is. So Marius Mims, 18, even with the signing of Trent Brown there. Um, Connor, you're up with the Rams at 19. Yeah, this one for me, I'm going to take Jared Verse. It was between him and Quinion Mitchell. I think they need pass rush help versus a very heavy handed speed to power kind of edge rusher responsible against the run. Every time we get to the Rams, I'm always impressed with the value that's still on the board at 19 and such a good spot they're in. Yeah, yeah. So Verse finally goes off the board here at number 19. I feel like we say this every time. The edge guys could go way earlier. But they probably won't. hard to. Yeah, find spots for him. Right. There's a lot of good offensive talent in this draft and a lot of teams that need offensive players. So a very, it's going to be very fascinating to see what happens around one with where these guys are matched up versus their big board versus needs and things like that. Steelers here at number 20. And I guess this is where we have, we can have kind of a similar convo. So the Steelers are up at 20. They need corner. Certainly also now need wide receiver. Certainly, with the trading of Deontay Johnson. I mean, we're looking at Van Jefferson, Quez Watkins, Calvin Austin the third, Denzel Mims. Obviously, you have George Pickens, but I'm saying, like, who who's the wide receiver two? And and beyond just wide receiver two, I mean, you need more than even just two wide receiver options. You gotta have legit options at, at three spots. And so there is a major need for wide receiver here. But Quinion's on the board, and he's by far my highest ranked player. And feels like it would just be wrong for the Steelers to pass up on him. Because I feel like he's the shutdown guy that can really bring a um, an improved presence to that secondary. Like, I, I, I like Joey Porter Jr. Like, I liked him last year. But I always felt as though he wasn't going to be a CB1. But if you had Joey Porter Jr. as your CB2, 
that's a situation that I'm very, very comfortable with. And I set that up here. I'm going to go Quinya Mitchell, the cornerback from Toledo. Could very well be defensive player one off the board when it comes to night one of the NFL draft. But here he lasts at 20. Can't let him get past the Steelers here. So Mitchell off the board. Um, Bagel, you're up with the Dolphins at 21. Yeah, I like that. I think you got with, with the Steelers. I mean, you got your field corner and you have your boundary corner. It feels like kind of a perfect match. And uh, no Christian Wilkins for the Dolphins, no problem. I'm going Byron Murphy. Oh, now you nice. get boy off the board. I usually get him off earlier. Uh, pause. Hold on. I usually, I usually, <laughs> I usually oh, wow. draft him to a team earlier. His Gen Z kids. <laughs> it, it, it took Connor. It took Connor like six seconds, and he just goes, "Oh wow." <laughs> Yeah, the phrasing there was difficult. Tough one. Oh, baby. Well, obviously not intentional. You don't, you don't get to 500,000 subscribers without that kind of talent. You don't, folks. You, you really, really don't. don't. You yeah. really don't. Is, uh, is Murphy DT1 for you? Um, I think it's so close with Jerzon Newton. I really haven't uh, fully assembled a big board yet to mm-hmm. uh, rank back and forth. I think Murphy I like better against the run. I, I like how he plays the leverage game a little bit better. Uh, sometime and Johnny Newton, I love, I mean, he lives in the backfield. You, mm-hmm. you guys obviously know that, but, uh, sometimes get washed up in the run a little bit more than Byron Murphy does. I think it's just, uh, again, it kind of depends what you want. Texas bias says, yeah, Murphy's the best player in the class probably, but, uh, yeah, I'll go with him at number 21 here. Murphy is so intriguing because you know, you, you talk about like him holding the point of attack against the run. This is a Texas team that had a 380 pound man in Tavondre Sweat, and yet they're playing Byron Murphy at the nose, right? I mean, like they're going odd front and they're putting you know, their defensive ends in either a four eye or a five technique sometimes when they want to spread it out even further. And Sweat will be the defensive end role. He'll play. He'll play above the tackle. And and it's like you, how is how is the 380 pound guy not playing at nose? And it's because. Uh, Murphy's unbelievably quick, but he's also unbelievably strong. So I think Miami would absolutely love this one. Uh, Connor, you're up at 22, Philadelphia Eagles. All right, Eagles at 22. Uh, I think wherever Ben Solak is out in the world, I'm going to give him a heart attack here. But I'm, I'm taking uh, Nate Wiggins over Terry on Arnold. Ooh. Man, Wiggins, I get that he's light, but this dude moves so differently. He's got instincts and coverage, not just out there athleting. His play speed is insane. I mean, I, I'm just I get it with the size because I usually don't like size outliers. And he's mm-hmm. he's not small. He's tall. He just needs to fill out. But I mean, I just once again, I value that play speed so, so much. The ability to be explosive, the hang time against the catch point in contested situations. Uh, Wiggins is a, a really, really good player that, you know, hopefully can stay healthy and, and get healthy and stay healthy. All right, we got Wiggins off the board at 22. Vikings at 23. This is fun for the Vikings because they got their quarterback and they still get to pick again. I know. Neither of the interior defensive linemen that I want to pick here are on the board. Both Newton and Murphy are gone. I mean, you could go you could go corner because Terry on Arnold's here. I mean, that definitely makes sense. I wonder if they would do that, though, with all like the draft investments that they have at corner. They still have Andrew Booth as well, who I'm sure they're they're hoping continues to develop. You signed Van, Andrew Van Ginkle. You signed Jonathan Grenard. Pretty deep, pretty good deal for Grenard. So it, it's hard for me to pick Latu here. Just take Bo Nix. See, what, yeah, let, let it play double out. Double quarterback. Hey, see what like happens. That. Double barrel. Quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> quarterback competition. You know that's best that's man what you wins. want. Let the best man win. Yeah. Other, other gets cut, not traded. They just go into summer and they say whoever wins this competition stays on the team. It's an starts. I quit match. It's an I yes. quit training camp match. <laughs> yes. Where yeah, loser loser has to walk. Man, who do I want here for Minnesota? I think I'm going Arnold. Even yeah, I mean, it, sec- it makes sense. Even with the secondary investments, I, I mean, there, there's a difference between saying no, 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 no. We're we're good with the guys that we've got. We'll let them develop, but. There's a difference between saying that and just staring Terry on Arnold in the face at 23 on draft night and not picking him. Because I think genuinely he could be CB1 on this team. So if that's ever the case, it's hard to just say, nah, we're good at that position. Because clearly you're not if you're passing on a guy that you think has that kind of a ceiling. I am going to go Arnold here 
Very curious. Vikings fans who are watching this, uh, we know it's probably not a realistic scenario. You're probably going to trade up and go get a quarterback. Let's say there's a world where tw- you still keep 23, because I'm sure you guys out there have run PFF mock draft simulators where you've just been like, yeah, you know, let's see. Let's see who might be available. Uh, let's get a little sample out there. I would love to know what positions that you're targeting. Because also at 23, very unrealistic to me that Newton or Murphy is going to still be on the board. So who you pick it? I'm going to go Terry on Arnold here at 23, but I'd be very curious to hear um, who the good people out there would be picking for the Vikings at number 23. Even if you're not a Vikings fan, if you're just a draft head, tell me who you think the Vikings should target there at the, at 23 in the first round. Bengal, you're up. 24, Dallas Cowboys. Love it. Um, I'll tell you what. They've, they've shown that they're not attached to Dak Prescott long-term. Oh, boy. We need to get that QB of the future, and Sam Hartman is sticking out like a oh, sore thumb. Yeah, he is. He is. I was going to say the same thing. Yep. Yep. No, I think I'll, I think I'll go Brian Thomas Jr. I, like, I look at the offensive Ooh. line, and I see all the holes, but I, I'm a big Brian Thomas Jr. guy, and you cut Michael Gallup. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. But – as good as C.D. Lamb is, I need a more competent outside wide receiver. too. I like Brandon Cooks. I just don't know what he gives you long term at this point. I'm going to go Brian Thomas Jr. I don't know if we've seen that pairing before, Connor. What do you feel about it? Because you are a you are also love a big Brian Thomas Jr. guy. I, is he not I, just a better Michael Gallup? Well, for <laughs> sure. In this yes. offense? Yes. I have him 11th overall. I He really shouldn't be here still, so that's you have to make that pick if I was Bengal. I mean, as much as you got the needs on the old line, that's just this dude is a difference maker in this offense. That's Jalen Tolbert slander, but you know, I guess it will. uh, Yeah, Brian Thomas Jr. is 40 times the player that Jalen Tolbert is. We'll say it with our chest on this show. (laughs) Again, again, slander. You know, just want people to know I won't stand for it. Connor clearly (laughs) standing on it here. Uh, You also, Connor, have the great pleasure. I'm picking for the Green Bay Packers. Hello, old friend. Uh, Bengal, we have a uh, reoccurring joke here on this show. Um, I'm sure Packers fans are sick of it, but the team is is so interestingly constructed because there's a lot of youth that's on the offensive side of the ball. They've put a lot of draft picks into that side. You know, you could use an offensive lineman, but then a lot of the holes that they have on their roster are non-premium picks. So it's not a lot of stuff that you would use in a first round in a first round selection. So. They have not only not only do they have a pick here at 25, so it's like later in the first round, but also they have two second round selections. So we're always going back and forth trying to find out what the value is. But there is, Connor, I will say there is a player on the board who Packers fans have absolutely loved that we have paired with them in the past. And so I wonder if you're going to do it here on this, what we would do mock draft. I am going to take Kool-Aid McKinstry. Ooh, was not where I was going. I didn't think you were. Where were you going? Graham Barton. Right. Packers so fans do love themselves from Graham Barton. As they should. I think Graham Barton would be an awesome pick. But let's say Green Bay, who picks twice in the second round, mm-hmm. thinks they can get a really good starting interior player which, in the second round, which you can. Yes. Yes. I would take the more premium position here. It's like if if I was picking for Green Bay here and they didn't have a second round pick, or maybe they had one, but the placement of it was that's eh, pretty far. I would probably just take the good player and Barton at a need and be done. Mm-hmm. But I think I can play the board with the assets they have. And I like doing that with corner now with Kool-Aid. Okay. So this gives them, they're pretty deep at corner. Kool-Aid's a, a really good player. Guys, the, he really wasn't challenged this year because of how good he was the year before that. Man, we got all, all five corners off the board. Texas might have went after him a little bit early in the year. That wasn't a great game. That was like... uh it's true. I remember reading, I read plays. this on some podcast. The amount of his target percentage in just that game compared to the rest of the season is insane. Well, they went <laughs> after him because my boy A.D. Mitchell was on the other side of things. So, you know, when you got A.D. Mitchell. Still on the board. I understand why you're throwing in the football. He is still on the board. We got the Bucks up at 26. I'm picking for the Bucks here at number 26. Before I get to that one, to everybody out there, if you got a family, you got to get term life insurance to protect them. It's one of the smartest financial decisions that you can make. And this time of year, it is the perfect time to get it done. So you guys can focus on whatever else the year has in store for you. Fabric was designed by parents for parents to get you high quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policies in less than 10 minutes. Fabric's got flexible policies that'll fit your family's budget with quality policies like million dollar coverage for less than a dollar a day. Get your personalized quote in just minutes and apply whenever it is convenient for you all online and to your schedule. You go from start to cover in less than 10 minutes with no health exam required. 
Join the thousands of parents who trust Fabric to protect their family and apply today in just minutes at meetfabric.com slash stock exchange. Meet Fabric, that's M-E-E-T fabric.com slash stock exchange. M-E-A-T fabric.com will send you to Bengals YouTube channel. Policies are issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. Not available in certain states. Price is subject to underwriting and health questions. I don't know if that um, redirect link is true, Bengal, but I figured I'd just you know give you. I'll tell you what, you're a pro's pro. Seamless transition into the ad read plus no mistakes, even like the sub writing in there as well. Oh my goodness. You do this that enough. Was, you do- that, that was like watching LeBron James on the heat, just doing his thing in the finals. It's unreal. You know, in my, uh, in my yearly review of PFF, they did call me the LeBron James of, uh, of podcast ad reads. So it's, you know, it is funny that you say that. Got to be good at something, right? Yeah. And if, and honestly, if it's making our sponsors happy, I'll take it. Connor can be actually good at the football stuff, as long as the money people are happy, and happy with uh, the scripts and everything. I gave you a little bit of attitude there. It was meant for Connor, but I, c- I couldn't bring it back around. Bucks are up at 26. I'll take it, gladly. I'll take it. I will. Um, this is... It's staring me in the face. This is the story of a girl. Um, Dude, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, that's devastating. I caught it like the second it came out of my mouth. I was like... Yeah, I got I got I got to finish the line here. This is the perfect spot for the Bucks. There cannot be a better scenario here outside of, you know, unrealistic whatever you want to call it. Liatu Latu is still here. Graham Barton is still here. These are the choices. It's like picking between your children. It is cuz I I love these dudes since summer scouting. And now I'm sitting here, hometown teams on the board. I got a chance to take one of them. It's like going to the animal shelter and you're picking between siblings and the other has to stay. Okay. All right. Why would you do that, dude? <laughs> you should feel awful about this. Now scenario. I'm just going to be hella sad the rest yeah. of the day. I would trade the pick so you don't have to take either. Yeah. All right. I'll trade this one for a seventh round pick. Who wants Just get me out of here. Get, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Washington. They need another pick. Tell them to come up for it. Uh, I'm going to go with Latu Latu here. Oh. He's the higher ranked player on my board. He's ranked number 11th overall. Best pass rusher in the country over the last two years. Um, black belt karate master when it comes to the hand usage and getting off blocks. The pass rush profile going into the NFL is already phenomenal. I'm not really worried about the neck. The guy's played two years of healthy football. Um, I think that that's, that, that, that's going to be behind him. Is he the best athlete? No. But to sit here at 26 and not take an absolute backfield sack master like Laatu Latu would be a disservice um, to building through the trenches. So I think like Connor talked about with – Packers Bucks could get an interior offensive lineman either on day two or maybe even next year maybe it's a long-term plan for them so I'm going a lot to here at 26 Bengal you're on the board with the Cardinals at number 27 I will remind you that Marvin Harrison Jr. was the pick at number four for me. yeah it's how fun would it be because I'm making the call right what would I do how fun would it be to get Adonai Mitchell in there as well I'm not going to do that but you could I mean, you, the, you just, the you just receiver could. You Mitchell, want, Harrison, Michael Wilson. Whew. You wanted to remind us that you're not going to, but you could. You have the power. Of course. Gotta why well, say a few words when I can st- say a ton with no meaning. <laughs> um it's my entire career. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll remind you guys that here are things that I'm not gonna do, but I could, just so we're all on the same page. <laughs> I, I, I'm between one of the interior offensive linemen. I'm looking at the depth chart. I see Chalte Froholt at center, Elijah Wilkinson, Giants legend Will Hernandez at right guard. Mm. You could probably use an upgrade on the interior. Um, and Barton gives you probably a little bit more flexibility, even if he's your fifth guy, like his swing tackle in a pinch if something happens, or if the something happens is Jonah Williams starting. Barton maybe could could fill in, but uh, I, I think we all think he's going to have more of an interior player. Also a GeoGuessr guy. I don't know if you guys oh, knew that. Right up your guy. Well, I was going to say, you started you started to do that stuff lately, right? I've seen uh, a couple years ago. Back like prime COVID, nothing's going on. Let yeah. me get addicted to Google Maps. What a time. Uh, I'm, you, I still would got you some just, skills. Would you describe yourself as good at it? Uh, yeah. yeah okay. I, I, would, I would say adding on to many different uh, – Traits here are the nerd persona. I I fill it out. I got a diverse draft profile in the nerd Olympics. <laughs> Geo Gesser just, you know, one uh, one skill in the bag there. Five five tool nerd over here. 
Bengal can recognize a homestead in the middle of Arkansas, unlike anyone else. <laughs> I go outside the U.S., Connor. I'm a little bit more diverse. Oh, yeah. oh. wow. He's oh, traveled. Mr. Worldwide. He's traveled. Listen, International listen, I, man. I know you're stuck in the tri-state area. Some of us uh, got out. Stuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> like cowards leave. Wow. They'll take the heat. Wow. Yep. And then they still root for the Yankees. Amazing how that happens. What am I going to do? Change after <laughs> really 20 plus amazing. years? I root oh, for the Giants I, too. It's not like I'm some bandwagon. In- Both of these teams have been playoff and, yep. and World Series and championship averse yep. over the past decade since I moved. Anyway, it's the other I'm not going to let, that's I'm not gonna let Jets Mets trash <laughs> tell me about something. <laughs> yeah, just angry what it is. I don't, I don't believe it. in second class citizens, but Mets Jets is pretty close. Oh man! Trev, anyway. All you have to do is say to somebody that left that couldn't take the heat in New York. Just, <laughs> couldn't take the heat. I, just... I went to go after the heat. I'm here in Houston. <laughs> just... It's true. That's true. Oh, Wait, are you, hold on. Do I ask him the the Taylor Ham pork roll question? Which one I is think, it? I think I actually I talked to Connor very briefly about this. I'm actually I'm not pro South or North Jersey. I represent the under. Uh, appreciated central jersey it's uh people say it doesn't exist but that's dumb it's it, it's an entire region i don't know how you can i'm, I'm a jersey shore kid and anyway i don't want i don't want more things here for me to be made fun of but uh back to the draft Trev's very lightly right now trev you see this <laughs> i i was a pork roll guy dance oh. it's just this is an all-time all-time bad appearance right now <laughs> 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 Hey, I don't know if it'll be public. This is our guest. Stand <laughs> your ground, Bengal. It's all right. Oh, You're just, yeah, doesn't, he doesn't invite me to the bachelor party. Root, and now. Oh, there, yeah, there it is. There Roots it is. for the Yankees from Texas. Calls I'm not from Texas. Roll. Not from Texas. It's unbelievable. Said hook him 20 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> he did. No, okay, yeah, I did. I grew up a Texas Longhorns fan. Ton of family in Texas. Uh, it's not like anyone in my family went to Rutgers. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm really... <laughs> Rutgers I gotta relax. Why, why, why did Max Melton just get the biggest say, stray so of the, the pod? Yeah, I'll take Max Melton here. Obviously, Max Melton. Max Melton here. Oh, um, oh man, how do I how do I recover from this? Yeah, Graham Arnold's Barton, 20. lock it in. All right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Again, like I feel like Connor. I feel like we haven't picked Graham Barton to the Cardinals at twenty seven, but I think this is a good selection. He's a good interior oh, I agree. lineman, and he could play any of the spots where they need him most. Yeah, it makes your offensive line better, and this that's been a part of their mission since this regime got there, yeah. right? When you look at the draft and free agency moves. So I'm a fan of it. I like it. Barton off the board to 27. This 20, 25, 26, 27 is just like the Graham Barton zone. It's like yeah. this dude's pro- – actually, you The throw Dolphins 20- sometimes – well, Will Goody gonna, take a first round offensive lineman though? Who would? What are you saying? Goody, the Packers GM, Brian. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, he hasn't. I don't think so. It's like it's like first round right. wide receiver yeah. right, for them. It's kind of like the uh, the black sheep, the uh, or the yeah. Moby still, Dick, the white I whale. Still, I still feel like twenty four through twenty seven is like the sweet spot. He's going off the board somewhere between twenty four and twenty seven. You might guess. Anyways, uh, Barton off the board now at 27. Uh, Connor, you're up with the Bills at 28? I'm going to take Troy Franklin here. I uh, love the vertical ability, route running, his fit in this offense with Josh Allen. Uh, they need, you know, you lose Gabe Davis in free agency. You do need a field stretching presence that has some length here. Uh, I am. I feel like in the minority of being higher on Franklin than Mitchell, I think Ultimately, if I was a betting man, I could see Mitchell being drafted ahead of Franklin. But mm. I think Franklin may, plays a more polished game. I think he's has a more uh, a better resume in terms of the consistency as well. So I'm going with Franklin for the Bills. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. I was letting I was I was letting it breathe there for a second there, but it does. It makes sense. I'd be taking Nicky Mitchell, but you know. It's- Fine, it's fine. Your pick. You're allowed to do that. You have the power to do it. Detroit's up at 29. I don't know if I'm just like locking in the next corner, right? I think if some people look at this spot and they go like, okay, go like whoever's left, you know, TJ Tampa, uh, Kamara, who's Alaska, left, like, right? They don't, I, I, They're day two guys. Like they they like a corner. Certainly, we saw no longer there. But 
you trade for Carlton Davis, you sign to Meek Robertson, you've got Brian Branch, you still have Emmanuel Mosley, who I liked a lot before he got hurt last year. So, I mean, if I know it's a, a big if, but like if he's healthy, that's a solid one, two, three corner group. I don't know, solid. You know, maybe they could use some extra juice, but of the guys who are left, I don't think it's a just like sprint to the podium with a corner. You sign Marcus Davenport, you got DJ Reader, I love Lee McNeil as well, Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. This one's kind of coming down to Jackson Powers Johnson. If you want some flexibility along the interior offensive line, because you signed Graham Glass now, but he's over 30. Um, Frank Ragnow has been beat up, and I don't. I, it, he obviously did not retire, but I don't know how much longer he's going to play. And then Kevin Zeitler is like 34 years old. So right. for them to take Jackson Powers Johnson, I think could make a ton of sense. I also kind of love them taking A.D. Mitchell because. You lose Josh Reynolds, you have Amonar St. Brown, you have Jamison Williams, but then you throw A.D. Mitchell in that mix too as the one, two, three. You got Sam Laporta there as well. Obviously, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. You're loading up on weapons to put up as many points on the board as you possibly can. Easy to see those guys in the XZ slot roles as well. They're kind of like puzzle, you know, fitting together. Right. I don't think I've ever done this before, but I think I'm going 80 Mitchell at 29. That's where I'm leaning. Okay. I'm ranking it happen. 80 Mitchell's at 29, putting up as many points as possible. Let's make the deep playoff run. Let's get to the Super Bowl. Let's do it. Bengal, you're up for the uh, Baltimore Ravens at 30. A lot less deliberation here for me. I'm going to go Tyler Guyton, lose Morgan Moses. Uh, and even so, I, I think you could still certainly invest in a tackle. Ronnie Stanley's had some injury problems. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like to me, Maybe you talk about a receiver here, something in the trenches, but uh, it's got to be Guyton for me at this point. Yeah. Connor, Niners at 31. Niners at 31 here. The corners went. I'm the actually, go. I'm going to take Jackson Powers Johnson here and just let him settle into like either that. guards. He's, you know, I would imagine he's going to play for Feliciano is what I would think instead at right guard there. But you have Jake Brendel as their center. You got Aaron Banks at left guard. Trent's still there at left tackle. McKivitt's at right tackle. I didn't really love the way the tackle class sits here. And I just think you're getting a player that's probably a top 25 player in the draft at 31 in JPJ. So that leaves the... Uh... Kansas City Chiefs here at number 32. Bengals, since you're the guest, let's do this. Let's 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 team up for this one. I don't want I don't want to take the last pick here. It feels disingenuous with you as the guest on this podcast. Uh where does your mind go first for the Kansas City Chiefs? And then we'll kind of talk about some prospects after that. You'd, you'd think receiver, right? It almost feels like a disservice to Patrick Mahomes to continue to roll out with their rolling out. And I don't know if you guys are uh into current events, we've reading heard. the news and things, but we've heard Rasheed Rice is a bad boy. I don't know. Yeah, Receivers might not might not be a good situation. Glaring need. Yeah. So I, yeah, I agree. That situation with... got worse. Yes. Did it? No, yeah. I, I, I've not, no I'm I've saying thought... like their receiver situation. Oh after this. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't. I have been. Uh, I haven't been keeping up it. with the legal releases. And and they needed a like wide receiver was a need for this team even before. Uh, this incident happened with Rasheed Rice. Right. So Hollywood's on a one-year deal. Right. And so I think like th this is firmly on the table for them. But I mean, is is the easy answer just Ladd McConkey because he could be a target monster for them? Or is there another type of receiver that you would think could fit the Chiefs the best, Bengal? What do you think? I mean, you're I think you're right on it there, obviously. Um Ladd offers inside outside flexibility. I don't think Hollywood Brown uh, you know, stops you from taking a receiver, obviously, uh, of that I same agree. mold. Uh, the, I mean, the only thing you consider is, okay, maybe we get a big jump ball guy, but is Keon Coleman number 32 overall? I, it, it, it's hard to say, uh, but it, it's some type of receiver. I'd take Ladd over him. Yeah, I, I would, I would take too. Ladd over Keon Coleman. I, I think Ladd has the easiest path to seeing NFL success. Just a more diverse skill set. But, man, Keon Coleman's fun. He goes up and gets it. Yeah. The, the but, only yeah. other one that I would be – honestly, the only other pick that I'm sort of tempted by here is – because there's no – there's not an offensive tackle that I love here. 
Mike Sander still, honestly, at 32, with Legereus Sneed gone and them probably having to play Trent McDuffie on the outside more, you get Sandra still and he could play in the slot for you and he could play like one of those safety roles as well because you're you're you know they lost Mike Edwards too so it's kind of like that safety rotation is a little bit thinner the slot corner rotation is a little bit thinner um I'd think about Sandra still here but uh we'll go Lad McConkey we'll go Lad McConkey just because there we go uh if you're watching this on YouTube you could see the full results in a second hopefully if my uh my internet actually works here you can see the full results on pff.com. You guys can go do your own PFF mock draft simulators as well. If you go to pff.com and you have a subscription, if you don't, you can get one thirty percent off using the promo code 30 MDS. Uh, let us know what you guys thought of this mock draft. There we go. Now it finally loaded. So there we go. You get, you guys can see the first round. I'm scrolling a little bit here. So you guys get the, uh, the full effect of everything, but let us know what you thought of the picks, the conversations, the analysis for it, the reasoning that we had, whether you were a fan of one of those teams or not, let us know what you would have done in this situation. It's again, it's, we're having a little bit of fun. We're relaxing here. We're doing what we would do. It's not as cutthroat when we're trying to predict exactly what these teams are going to do. This is a peer into what we think for these football players. So obviously you hear what Connor and I think. Now you've heard what Bengal thinks as well. Bengal, thank you so much for joining us, dude. This is this is so much fun, man. We, we really enjoy this one. We obviously love the mock draft formats. You, you, and, uh, you and I talked about this before we hit record, like, the Madden generation that we kind of come from or the Madden thought process is the draft is the most fun part. The fantasy drafts, all that kind of stuff. That's how we came up. That's why we love the draft here now. So to kind of get to, to go through one of these exercises with you was, uh, was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. There were some uh, ups and downs, of course. I, I You know, I Not think the, uh, the seemingly infinite buffering at the end there with the uh, simulator is a perfect <laughs> summation of <laughs> – encapsulation the, uh, episodes yeah it is true that is very, very true but you know what we powered through we gave the people what they wanted hey what do you got coming up on the channel uh between now and draft weekend that people can look forward to so we can push everybody to your stuff nothing good no, there we go there we go folks if you were going to just subscribe to Bengals channel just smash subscribe on this channel that's that all we got to say yeah. honesty is the best policy <laughs> All right. Well, perfect way to end it. Look, look, Bangle does fantastic stuff over at his channel. He's being mo- modest. He's being self-deprecating, like we are here as well. But go follow all his fantastic work. Follow him on on on. I was gonna say Twitter, but it's X now. Um, you big Instagram guy? Should I also push people to Instagram? Should I push people to TikTok? Should they stay the hell away from that or no? What do you're you young enough no. for TikTok. What's up? You're young enough for TikTok. <laughs> right? uh, TikTok. TikTok is uh, cancerous. <laughs> it's, I, I hate that app. But, uh, you know, you know if you try to conform, try to grow Instagram. I mean, what am I going to do? Post a picture of my setup every day. It's yeah. Just, you know, yeah. That's it's a sweet uh, trophy behind you. Yeah. True. I'm looking to get a uh, number two here in a minute. Ooh. Oh, second channel. Wow. Oh, look at you going off. It's building look an empire. You. He's multi-channel. He's got, it's like Connor said, he's building that bar. Go I follow Bengal and all this stuff. <laughs> he's fantastic. He's a great follow for football. It's so much more stuff. Um, Bengal, we appreciate it. Connor, you got anything else before we get out of here, my friend? No, big thanks to Bengal. It was a lot of fun as the uh, guest mock draft series continues. Trev and I will be back later in the week with another positional preview as we get closer to the draft. Yeah, and he was purposefully vague there because we have not talked about <laughs> which position we're going to do yet. But No fucking uh, clue. We're playing... <laughs> We'll see. We're playing the hits, okay? Yep. Now is the time of the year. We've entered April. We've done a couple of, you know, the tight ends, the interior defensive linemen. We ate our vegetables with some of those rankings because we haven't discussed too much. But over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be giving you guys our updated edge rusher rankings, quarterback rankings, wide receiver rankings, corner rankings. So we'll get to the good stuff. That'll come a little bit later in the week. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers for Bengal. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. We'll see you later this week.